On today's show, we recap the Leafs preseason opener. How did Willie look down the middle? Who else stood out to us? And there was a new development in the special teams department over the weekend. We'll talk about all that more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DeStefano, my co-host Dave Morissuti. Dave, it's good to be back, buddy. I was uh, I had some serious FOMO listening to the podcast uh, while I was away. Good job for uh, man in the ship there for the week, because dude, a lot happened last week. There was a lot going on with training camp starting up, so I'm excited that we got some game action to talk about today and talk a little bit about what we missed also over the weekend. There's some interesting things happening on both the power play and the penalty kill. We'll get into all of that on today's show. Why don't we start by recapping uh, the the first game, right? The Maple Leafs falling 3-2 to two in their preseason opener to the Ottawa Senators. Uh, I guess let's start with the easy question. Dave, what'd you make of the efforts? I mean, it's preseason, so I always have to temper expectations of especially yes. the first period, first game, but it didn't start great. <laughs> it wasn't no. a great start to the game. No, it, it, it was one of those where like, hey, guys, you know, you're playing a, an actual hockey game right now, right? You're not just this is not scrimmage happening. So, yeah, it was it, the first period was tough to watch. But I, I did appreciate them being more competitive in the second and third period. I'll give I'll give them that. They they it, it was looking like one of those where uh, is Ottawa just gonna dominate the first period and things are just gonna kind of look lax a days. I did like how they things sort of picked up after that first period. Yeah. So the shots on goal after the first period, Ottawa twenty four, Toronto seven. And uh, they led 2 nothing after the first period as well. Ottawa did so. After the first 20, you're right. Things didn't look good. The Sens up 2 nothing and out shooting Toronto 24-7. to And seemingly the puck was in Toronto's end of the ice the entire time. They they were turning the pucks over and they couldn't really, um, you know, figure out a way to get through Ottawa. And then things changed in, uh, in, in the middle frame there in the second period. And in the third, they ended up out shooting Toronto. Ottawa, I think it was uh, 20, 31 to 8 the rest of the game. So after the first period, um, they outshot them 31 to 8. So they really got their legs under them and uh, and woke up. Wasn't enough, obviously, uh, as they did fall 3 to 2. But, you know, still, I, I think that the Maple Leafs, when you look at the rosters, right, you, you, you match them up on the whiteboard. I think we can all say that on paper, it looked like Ottawa brought a bit of a better group for that first game. But that also could mean in the game tonight that they're going to be playing part two, which we're going to preview shortly. Um, Toronto probably going to ice the better roster here. So although they lost three to two and they got, you know, their, their lunch money taken in the first period, the fact that they were able to even the playing field and, you know, win the second and third period in my eyes um, with a team that was, you know, probably not as good as the one that they were playing, uh, that they were pretty solid and and I would still give them a, a pretty you know, a high grade. I'd say probably a B plus is what I would give them from the second period onward. Yeah, I mean, in these games, when you see the lineups, it's like, well, the, the Leafs really only had like one line full, well, a line and a few NHLers kind of scattered around. I, I look at, okay, the NHLers, it's nice to see the chemistry start to form there, but I want to see like who the other guys that were going to stand out from all that. So like I was looking at guys like Razor Mint and, Matthew Nyes, um was it playing in this one? Um, Alex Steves was another one I, I thought looked looked pretty he, good. He impressed me. He did, and and I mean he had a nice cushy spot up, kind of you know on the top line there. So he he had a nice opportunity playing with some good players, but he took full 
advantage of it because I thought that he was one of the better um, Leafs forwards out on the ice tonight. He was rewarded with a nice goal, showed some patience there to kind of wait out the defender, skate, uh, find some some ice for himself, and then rip it. I did think that Alex Steves had himself uh, a pretty good outing, and, and he's one of those players that's going to be fighting for, you know, that 12th, 13th forward um, type of spot. You know, there's going to be a bunch of them that are going to be fighting for maybe that one roster spot that's still up for grabs, and he's going to be one of those guys, right? So it, it was good to see him get off to a good start for sure. Yeah, and obviously the uh, on the blue line, like obviously there was you know Morgan Riley, Timothy Lilligren. Interesting to see the two of them pair together. I mean, they're not going to throw TJ Brody for a full preseason schedule. I get that, but it was it was interesting that those two were paired off together. And yeah, it, there's guys who are on the bubble that are trying to make a name for themselves. One of those guys was Connor Timmins, right? Like I will was hoping to see Connor Timmins maybe try to push himself into the conversation for a roster spot. And I didn't really see that from him. Like this wasn't a game where I could say Connor Timmins, like he, he was good. Like, a, you know, making passes, but in his own end, I didn't feel like he was up to snuff, especially in that first period. I think he was vic- like a victim of a really bad first period. Yeah. Did he end up returning to the game? I know that he uh, he he left the game at some point. I do remember that, but I, I can't recall if he returned or not. I'm um, just trying to see if there's anything online about whether or not he he did return. Um, but, oh, what's that? I'm gonna check natural stature because they usually have the shifts laid out. Yeah, see if he ended up returning. But regardless, when he was out there, yeah, he wasn't really doing a whole lot for uh, for for the Leafs and. I'd say he was one of the guys who, again, is fighting for one of those final roster spots, and uh, he didn't really put forward a, a great effort, I guess you could say. Um, someone else who I really liked out today, and and it's it's not going to come as a surprise, but I thought Matthew Nyes had a really good game. I thought that he was battling hard. You know, a couple of times he ended up uh, alongside Brady Kachuk in the corners trying to battle for pucks along boards. And, you know, more than one occasion, he came up with with, with the puck. You, you look at the Lagasin goal, that's him winning a board battle, getting it back to the defender who gets it over to Lagasin, who walks in and scores. Matthew Nides doesn't engage into that board battle. You know, that that play doesn't happen. So, again, you know, the, the this team, I think we're expecting for them to be a little bit more physical. When they added guys like Tyler Bertuzzi, like Max Domi, who also took a penalty 13 seconds into to the game, which I thought was hilarious. Um, Domi taking a roughing penalty in a Maple Leafs uniform. Whoever heard that from? Then obviously Matthew Nye is going to add a little bit more, you know, PNV, a little bit more size and some weight. You know, someone who can go into the corners a little bit harder than some of these other smaller players that we've seen that we saw over the course of the Kyle Dubas era. So we're kind of seeing that already come. Um, you know, to fruition, already seeing the fruits of the labor in a way of what winning board battles can do for keeping possessions alive, keeping the puck alive, whether it's in the offensive end, keeping it alive to, to have more opportunity, or if it's winning a battle and getting it out of your zone in the defensive end. I thought we saw many circumstances where we saw that happen tonight. One of the better players was Matthew Nyes and retrieving some of those pucks. I, I, I really hope that this kid continues to take steps we saw him playing extremely well in the playoffs for the Maple Leafs. Um, and then the unfortunate injury shortened, uh, you know, his his time there, obviously, with Toronto. And they had a good rookie camp. They had a, re- a rookie tournament last weekend in Traverse City. So for him to, to come out, get the first game, and, and play pretty well, I think is, is, you know, tremendous to see from him. I think he ended up with, you know, nearly 20 minutes of ice time for himself tonight, which is what, exactly what you want to see, a couple shots on goal couple hits you know it's that that's what you're looking for out of Matthew Nyes I thought that he was one of the uh, at least better players tonight yeah and w- with Matthew Nyes it's there's a reason why a lot of people are excited about him because he's a different makeup of a lot of the players that we've come to see the last few years from the Leafs right he's got that blend of skill size like and willing to use it more than I think we've seen from guys with size on this team. Like Austin Matthews has size. Does he do everything that Matthew Nice does? Pretty similar. I think Matthew Nice really uses that to his advantage and understands that that's what makes him such a good player. And yeah, it's really good to see that the Leafs are basically pushing him that into that position where he has to 
play those minutes and show how far he has come, right? Like we can say that he has a spot on this team, but he's got to go out there and prove it at the same time, right? So they're going to give him every opportunity to do that. I do like that they are doing that. I'd like that they're doing it with some of the other younger players too. They're not just going to, you know, give the spots to veterans. They're going to let these younger guys earn their opportunities. We'll get to William Nylander and our evaluation of him uh, in a moment with him finally getting a look uh, at center in a, in a game. Uh, before we get to that, though, is there anyone else that you want to kind of give a shout out to or anything else that happened in the game that you want to quickly mention here? I thought Dennis Hill to be looked good. I liked yeah. what I saw from him. There was one play I thought it was going to be a goal because center is going with a cross crease pass and Tim Stutz is on the other side. Looks like he's trying to go for the tap in for the hat trick and he'll be did a nice side to side to stop it. He was so impressive in the rookie term and his size makes him Before. such a, yeah, it gives him such an advantage. Now I think with his uh, stick handling, there's a little bit of work to be done there, but like, I, I just liked what I saw. I saw from him and I'm very interested to see how his progression now that he's over here in North America full time, how that all shakes out. Yeah, wasn't tested a, a whole lot, but like you said, there was a couple of, you know, high grade opportunities that Ottawa was able to get, and he was able to to stop them. He stopped. Uh, well, I guess he only faced four shots, only played the third period, but stopped all four uh, that he played faced. So uh, definitely going to get a chance to see him again. I would imagine throughout preseason, it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up on the depth chart in terms of you know is he a starter for the Marlies, a backup? Is he maybe you know just getting his feet wet in, the, in North America? Do they want him to go down and potentially play in the ECHL? I don't know. They've got a lot of goalies in that kind of category where it's. ECHL, AHL could be either, um, but he's certainly somebody who, uh, after Joseph Wall, is probably their their best goaltending um, prospect that they have. So it, it'll be interesting to see what else he could do throughout uh, training camp. Um, uh, Morgan Riley played a pretty good game. Also played a game high twenty five minutes. Uh, swiped one of one of the pucks off the goal line in the or his first or, or second period. But uh, Petrozelli ended up. I think it was he poke checked. Uh, a pass that ended up going off with a skate of the defender and then was going towards the net. And Morgan Riley made a nice sweep of the puck there. So good heads up play by Mo. Um, all right. Why don't we take a quick break here, Dave, when we get back, shout out William Nylander and how he did in his debut at center. Uh, so we'll talk about that. We'll kind of get you caught up on everything else that happened in training camp over the course of the weekend and tee up tonight's game. Leafs and Sens part two, the second game of preseason. So all that more coming up. Uh, you're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked On Leafs podcast is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. It's simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation care. Don't get caught unprepared. And you can get $20 off on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That is J A S E medical.com. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. And just a reminder, we are a daily Maple Leafs podcast every uh, every day, Monday through Friday. We got new episodes coming out. So make sure that you're locked into what's going on with the Maple Leafs with us here on Locked On Leafs. Find us wherever you get your podcast from, wherever you stream it. Also up on YouTube. Uh, go subscribe there as well for the video format. Um, we'd really, really appreciate it because, boy, it's it's back. Hockey's back, right? We finally got our first taste of action today uh, with the Maple Leafs. It was a loss. You know, it was a loss, but it's preseason. No one really cares about the score. It's all about the process uh, rather than the results. And speaking of process, one thing that I think everyone had their eyes on from a Maple Leafs perspective was how William Nylander was going to look 
uh, at the center ice role today. Um, how did you think Willie looked at center? It was rough at start. At the start, he got a little behind on the faceoffs, but obviously finished the game pretty much dead even in that department. So yeah, he was eleven and eleven, so legitimately fifty percent. Yeah, like if he's in the fifty, if he's in that range during the year, like that's pretty good for someone that's not playing center all the time in his career, right? Like I know guys usually are in like like the the top centers are in like the fifty five plus range, but what I liked the most was the chemistry that him and Max Domi seem to have almost right off the hop, which is, which is encouraging because we've been trying to figure out where exactly Max Domi fits on in this lineup. Well, we on the other kind of showed that maybe he can get chemistry with Domi and that's a duel that they can rely on offensively defensively. That's still, that's probably going to be the work in progress for the two of them. That's always kind of been the knock on them. But yeah. if they're able to get those offensive opportunities, it might not really matter as much. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine that they'll be like that would be the line that Sheldon Keith, you know, when they're in the defensive end in the last four minutes of a game, a one goal game, and they're trying to hold a lead. I don't think that Willie and Max Domi will hear their name to go over the boards to take that key draw in the final minute. But uh, I mean, if you can get those guys out there, you know, off off changes and uh, or on the fly and obviously get them going with some offensive draws offensive zone uh, faceoffs i think that's where you're going to find you know the best uh, success with those guys right their bread and butter is their offense and you know I, I think it's actually encouraging you're right that we saw a little bit of you know some chemistry building with max domi and and william nylander because I think it's twofold. One, you know, Domi's an, a, a good passer. Like he can, he can pass the puck, right? He's more of a, a playmaker and a facilitator than a scorer. Willie just put up 40 goals, man. Like that guy can score when he has the opportunity to. So if he has a, a natural passer, which Tavares isn't really a natural pass. I think that's almost why those two just haven't been able to click the last couple of years. Cause they're just, the, the, the roles kind of clash a little bit. But if you can get those two on a line together and then you get Tavares with maybe a, a, a Nyes or, you know, someone else, I think that there is opportunity to have like three different pairs um, of lines and be able to exploit some matchups with three got three lines that can score. I would imagine that Tavares' line will end up being more of the traditional matchup third line type of thing and whatever line Willie and, and if it is Domi who ends up on his wing, will be the offensive, you know, more of a second line type of duty. Um, that said, it also would be nice if Domi did end up next to Nylander on his wing. I mean, we're early in camp, so you can't 100% read into it and say, okay, this is what Keith wants. Camp is all about just getting different looks at different things and seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, so maybe it does work and we get a couple more looks at it. Uh, but I think one thing that could benefit having Domi on Nylander's wing is if Nylander isn't having it that night in the face-off dot and on his off offside, his offhand, having a guy like Domi who has also taken draws and is a face-off man, having him to be able to come in and take some draws, I think could be very beneficial for him as well. If they have like Lafferty on their line, he can do the same thing. Yarn Croc could do the same thing as well. So, you know, having guys and the Maple Leafs have really liked to have versatile players who can play all three, four positions or guys who can take draws, centerman, winger, whatever. And this really helps when you're looking for guys, you know, situationally, if you're on Nylander's off and he's not, you know, he's not strong on the left side. Okay. Then let's put Domi in there or yarn crock in there or whatever you want to do on the right side, put yarn crock, whatever it may be. Um, you know, you can do that also. So I think that, I don't know if you need to necessarily look and be like, okay, Nylander's got to be a 50% face off man for this exercise to work for this experiment to work. Cause I don't think face off is necessarily going to be it. I've seen a lot of discourse. I need to talk about it last week, I guess when it originally was out there, I saw a lot of people being like, Oh, he's barely taken any face offs the last few years. Is it even going to work? What if he has to take it on his offside? Well, if it's not going well, you pair him up with other people on his line who can win face offs and draws. And, and there you go. Like, it's not that big of a deal ultimately. Uh, but one thing that I thought he did do is it, it gave them like a speed element down the middle 
right? Whether he's taking the puck up or it gives him a speed element. So, you know, when you're in transition, you can get the puck out a lot quicker, right? Get from your end of the blue line across center ice and into the offensive end a lot quicker. We know that Nylander has always been pretty good at doing that um, on uh, on the wing, you know, his transition game and, and carrying the puck with speed. Being able to do that at center just creates more because it allows you to give the puck to the left side of the ice or the right side of the ice. It makes you a little bit less predictable. Um, so it, it, it's, it could be a good thing to have a guy like Neiland who's got the skating and the speed and the puck handling abilities he does to be skating up the middle with the puck. So uh, I, I thought it, it, it looked good for the most part, um, looked fine, I suppose, um, but definitely going to be a work in progress as, as we've all kind of acknowledged. Yeah, and, and look, one game doesn't make or break an experiment like this one way no. or the other. No. And I think like even like I think it's gonna even take some regular season games because you know he's not going up against top NHL talent all the time in preseason. No. It's tough to gauge how exactly this this idea I mean, I don't even know if we can really call it the experiment anymore because like they're like really committed to trying to get this done well i mean it's 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 still an experiment like it's not set in stone that okay nylander is now a center this is happening no matter what the results are it's still somewhat of an experiment i think but yes they are they want this to work nylander wants this to work obviously it'd be beneficial for all parties if it does but it's still going to have to be a work in progress and if it doesn't they've got to have you know, the wherewithal and, you know, they, they got to pull the plug if it's just not working, obviously. Right. And I guess it's just when you like Sheldon Keefe really seems to think like this is something he wants to like, he's been wanting to do. And really someone was like, maybe he never really had the full autonomy to do it right. The way he wanted it to. I don't know if you subscribe to that theory, but I'm, I found that quite interesting to hear people say that. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, it, it, it is definitely possible that there's been some things that Sheldon Keefe has wanted to do, whether with, with the roster and he hasn't been able to do that um, for whatever reason. I, I don't know. I'm not in that room. I haven't um, had conversations with, with Sheldon, with, with Dubis, with tree living, but if one of the things that he's been wanting to do is play Nylander at center and get a look, well, he's getting it now, right? He's getting it now. Um, whether maybe this was a tree living thing though, too, right? Where this could be him saying, okay, this guy wants $10 million. Well, let's see if he can earn $10 million, get out there and, and do it by playing a much more premium position. Um, then you can earn that type of money. Willie, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm really not sure what, the real reason behind it is or why they're choosing at 27 years old to give him a look there um, as opposed to earlier in, in his career. Really not 100% sure what the reason is, but hopefully it, it, it works out for the Maple Leafs because mm. there's an opportunity for them to really be a matchup problem if they can get those three duos um, set in stone and have them all firing on all cylinders. And um, I, I think that it could definitely work out uh, for the Maple Leafs, for, for sure. Um, all right, Dave, we'll take one more quick break. When we get back, let's tee up tonight's game. We got part two, a little double header action with the Maple Leafs and Senators tonight. Joe Wall is going to be the starter. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that game and what we can expect. And uh, a couple other things that happened over the weekend at Leafs camp that we'll touch on. So we'll get to all that and more in a moment. But first, let me tell you guys all about one of today's show sponsors, and it's our good friends over at FanDuel. Snap into action uh, this NFL season with FanDuel. It's North America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including the spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL and the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Maple Leafs fall 3-2 to the Senators in their first 
preseason game, but preseason game number two shortly after. So they got to be goldfish and they got to forget about that loss because we got one more game coming up tonight against the same Ottawa Senators. This time this game going to be in Toronto. So on home ice, presumably some better players. Uh, some of the big boys who didn't play in that first game set to play tonight, you would think. Uh, we don't have the official rosters out yet, but potentially could see a, a Matthews or a Marner. A, a, a better. I'm going to be at the game. If I don't get good oh. players. Oh, are you now? I'm at the game tonight. So if they don't play, like if I go in there and it's like an all AHL lineup, which has happened to me before, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people have been there before. And this is, I, I don't, so the, the ticket, I was offered these tickets from, uh, to go with a friend of our, a friend of mine. Um, and I've had that happen before. It's like, Hey, you want to go to the leaf game preseason game? Got free tickets. Sure. Why not? And it's an all AHL lineup. Nothing worse than when, People who I, I'm looking at how much tickets for this game are going for. And I'm saying like two two hundred fifty dollar tickets. I really hope people don't pay that much without seeing the lineup. I really, really do hope so. Well, I mean, the lineup's not going to come out until well, it's, it, for most people who are listening to this podcast, it probably is out by now. But when we're recording this uh, Sunday night, it's it's not out, and most people are have already purchased the tickets, Dave, like yourself. So it's a roll of the dice when you're buying preseason tickets. You never know exactly who you're going to see. You just hope that it's a good game. But I would imagine it's the first, it's the home opener, they probably will have a couple of the big boys out there. And, and I mean, they're kind of getting some new a new face on that line, right? Like they want to get a look at Tyler Bertuzzi and how he looks alongside those two, Matthews and, and Marner. So I think it would make sense to kind of debut that line in the very first uh, whole preseason game at home. And then maybe you can go away from it uh, for a game and then come back to it a little bit later on. They go, what, six or seven preseason games? So uh, there's a chance to come back to it. But I think typically, you know, the first preseason game at home, they, they give you a couple of their big boys, especially the ones who didn't play in uh, in the game uh, in the first one. I think we'll see, you know, Tavares, May Matthews, maybe a Nylander or uh, a Marner, um, Klingberg potentially could see some Klingberg action in this game which would be fun to see. I do know that Joe Wall is starting. So Joe Wall is going to be the starter. Whose backup is, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, whether if it's Samsonov or maybe it's you know one or the other. Yeah, it could be Marty Jones potentially. Could get the the other uh, you know other period or period and a half or something. But it should be a, a, a fun game regardless. You know, And they, they try and get their first dub of the preseason. What I'm really, really hoping for, is we don't get hollow notes if the Leafs score. So I actually, okay, so I saw something on Twitter that apparently rumor on the street is uh, hollow notes is no more. Now, whether or not they make that debut in preseason or they make that announcement when the first goal is scored in the regular season, I do not know. Um, I think they should still play Hall and Oates for the preseason. And then in the regular season, you you fake everyone out with the new goal song, whatever it may be. Um, that's how that's that. how they should do it. They should still do Hall and Oates tomorrow. Get it out of the system is what you're saying. Get Hall and Oates out of the system and then. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And then boom, first goal scored, right? Matthews you know, comes down the ice. Deke's guy out of his shoes up top corner. And then bam, new goal song. That's what I think. That's what should happen. Oh, as long as it's not during the regular season, I'll be okay with that. Yeah, I agree with that one. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, is there anything that you are that that you want to see in this game tonight? I mean, I would like to see some goals. It was nice. There were some nice goals in the Senators in the first preseason game. I like to. See, I mean. Um, I'm curious to see how balanced the line is going to be in terms of because in the in in the first game it was really one line of NHLers and then you had Matthew and I's there too. I'm curious to see how balanced this lineup is going to be for for this game and yeah, like how uh, how clean if Klingberg's playing, I want to see how he looks, especially defensively, because Sheldon Keith. Yeah. One of the things I uh, he talked about was. 
he knows he's got to be better defensively. So there's an acknowledgement that it ain't great what's been happening with him the last few years. There's an acknowledgement there. But if it actually happens, I'm curious to see how, how he looks there. Yeah, he's a, he's a guy who I am excited to to get a glimpse at for sure. I'm with you on that one. Klingberg, hopefully he plays in this game and we could get uh, our first sight at him in game action. Uh, Easton Cowan, I'd like to see Easton Cowan play a game coming off of a really strong um, rookie tournament last weekend. Let's see what he can do in uh, in like an NHL setting. You know, Nick Robertson potentially could uh, could could factor into a game here. Um, you know, he needs to get off to a good start. He's he, him, Steve's like, there's a bunch of guys who are really vying for one of those final spots on the roster. Um, Noah Gregor is another guy and those guys all need to have strong performances in these games. So, um, you know that they're going to get, you know, even extra, extra games. They might end up playing four or five where like Marner, Tavares, Neil, like those guys are probably going to play like two or three of these games. Um, and it's those those depth guys who are probably going to end up playing uh, more, especially the ones who are fighting for jobs. So um, I, I, I'm always when it comes to preseason, it's it's less about watching the stars, I suppose, for me. I like to see what the depth can do. The guys who are fighting for for jobs or, you know, prospects who I, I don't get to see too, too often. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm aiming to uh, to watch in this game uh, against Ottawa. So. Uh, yeah, just a reminder, got the game tonight. What's puck drop? 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock puck drop uh, uh, in Toronto? Yeah. Yeah, 7 o'clock puck drop. Joe Wall uh, is the starter, and see what happens. Uh, really quickly, Dave, before we uh, before we go, um, catch me up. All right, what, what did I miss over the first few days of camp while I was away? What were kind of the top storylines through camp that I missed? Well, Ryan Reeves doesn't mind having music at camp, but he doesn't like that it's EDM. We're not. A, he's like, you need a whole. Other... <laughs> he's a char- He's a character, man. Like I tell you, like he, he, you could tell. Like, and then the next day, like they had music again, and it was not EDM. So somebody got the message there. Interesting. Uh, Actually, I bet he plays tonight. I bet he plays. Yeah, there's probably a good chance he plays tonight with uh, yeah. camp and. Uh, he was Noah Gregor was the line in uh, during uh, scrimmage. So yeah, like there was that um, Morgan Riley not on PP one. It is John Klingberg taking duties there, which I yeah, don't what do you make of that because that came out like Friday or, or Saturday yeah, it came after it recorded, of course. Um, I'm not surprised, and the reason why I'm not surprised is they understand his strengths. So you got to utilize, like, if you're going to bring in a John Klingberg and not use him as a top power play guy, I can understand why, like, Morgan Raleigh, there was no issues with Morgan Raleigh on, play, on PP1. He, they were a good unit, but I feel like... He, they, his shot, his shot was wasn't a threat, right? Like, that. No. It, that's always no. been a bit of a thing. Like, yes, <laughs> they were a top operating power play without that. But imagine what it could be with a threat from the point, right? And that's something that Klingberg can actually bring to this team. Uh, so in that, you know, respect, I am curious to see what it looks like. Plus, it's a brand new system, right? Like, yeah, they got a new coach uh, running the power play, right? So uh, long gone is uh, oh, he's in Washington now. What's his name? I'm a blanket. That's a Sandy. No. Oh, Jesson, the the coach, the coach. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Oh my God, I'm having a bad one. Uh, Carberry, Spencer Carberry. Thank you, Spencer Carberry. Gone is Spencer Carberry in his Guy Boucher to implement uh, his system here on the power play as he runs it. So he was spray painting the ice, uh, which is not something they usually do. So, so, so what's weirder the the spray paint the spray paint on the power play. Or uh, the blinders on the goalies that we saw last year. Those little goggles that they had. What's no, a weirder tactic? I, I think the spray paint's weirder. One, the ice crew is probably pissed off about that. Because I don't know <laughs> how easy that, that stuff comes off. I would imagine it's very similar to like... You know how like in soccer, they have the, yeah, uh, the, lot, the paint. The little... And it, it dissolves very quickly. I would imagine it's similar. I, I don't think that they're out there using permanent paint. On the ice, 
I like I do think when you look at um, the power play, I do like that they're gonna have that shot at the point because yeah. I've always hated where the penalty killers on the other team can just kind of collapse down low because there's no real reason to defend Morgan Riley at the point. So I do appreciate that. And that's why I kind of thought they would have tried Klingberg on the power play. And then on the other side of the special teams, you okay, go ahead. Well, just really quickly, it, it's the only way to actually justify the contract. Yeah. Right. Like you don't bring John Klingberg in to play him. 17 minutes a night, not great defensively. And he just takes some shots and maybe he provides some offense at five on five. But in order to really, I think, be worth the the, the, the shot, the contract that they gave him, he kind of does have to play some power play minutes here and and, and provide something. And not 20 well. seconds after the first power play unit stays right. for most of the opportunity. Right, exactly. So... I mean, again, this could change. It's early into camp, but as of now, uh, it looks like Klingberg is is going to start with the the first unit duties, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. But um, ultimately, that the main cast is still there on the first unit: Matthews, Marner, Tavares, and Nylander. So I think they'll they'll be okay, regardless of who's up at the point. But maybe they can get just that one little extra element of a threat from the point. Um, could open up a, a little bit more for everybody else, and maybe it could be even more deadly. We'll see. Uh, but yes, Dave, you were you were about to bring up uh, another development in the special teams on the other side of the coin on yeah. the penalty kill. We saw a certain player out there killing some penalties in practice. Yeah, if you're not a fan of your top uh, top centers playing on the penalty kill, well, turn your eyes because Austin Matthews is going to get some time on the penalty kill. Uh, at least this season, I don't know how much we've heard this before, though. I will say this like him and Spets. I remember they took turns on the penalty kill at one point, and like <laughs> Austin Matthews didn't play a whole lot, <laughs> neither one really did. Spetsa not being good enough on the penalty kill was why he sat out opening night against the Senators when Mike Babcock was here, if you recall, because he. Didn't quite get it on the PK yet. Wasn't quite ready. Are you kidding me, Babs? It's Jason Spezza. You shouldn't be on the penalty kill anyway. <laughs> he, he, the guy signed for league men because he just wants to help this team. And yeah, well, we already anyway. know where the where <laughs> that all let, laid out. But yeah, like with Austin Matthews, he said he's up for it. He wants to do it. We just know the reason why you don't want to do that is because you just gave the guy a historic contract. And we know what can happen on a penalty kill. Although Morgan Riley's been doing it for quite a while, so it hasn't blown up in the team's face. Morgan yet. Riley, sorry, Morgan Riley. Mitch Marner. Okay, I was gonna say, I was like, God, Mitch Marner's Mitch been Marner. doing it for so long, for a while, and it hasn't blown up in the team's face. This is a late night for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's great at it, though. Like Marner, yeah. Marner is great at it. Um, he's a terrific penalty killer. Yes, um, and often gets many looks uh, shorthanded as well and and like even like a couple times he set up david camp for some short-handed goals so it, it does work we saw nylander get some opportunities last year randomly would get like 20 25 seconds here and there on the pk i would not envision matthews being a fixture on the penalty kill um but it's an option if they want to roll him out there like if they're on a five minute major or something like that or a double major and they don't want the same four players rotating on and off. They're going to need a little bit of a bench. And to know that Matthews is willing to do that, because you got a couple of, a couple of looks throughout training camp of it, you know, it's it's. I think it's totally worth it. Um, Especially because he's so good at the face-offs, right? Yeah, exactly. That too, right? You go out there if you need to win a face-off. I mean, maybe it's even a face-off get-off situation, but you want a face-off, you get the puck out and you've killed off you know 15 20 seconds just by doing that so you know there's there's another benefit to having matthews out there on the face off um in, on the penalty kill so i don't think it's the worst idea i don't envision him getting much time on the pk it'll be no. very sporadic it'll be timely um but ultimately he's you know a good player 
Uh, he's led the league in block shots. Uh, was it this year or last year? I think this year as uh, like among forwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it led all forwards in block shots. Um, so something he's willing to do and you, you know, you need some guys willing to do that on the PK when you're shorthanded. So, you know, not, not all the time, obviously, cause you don't, you don't want an injury, but uh, it's certainly something that the Maple Leafs, if, if they want to, he's open to doing it too. So that's, that's interesting. Um, all right. Anything else that, uh, that we missed that we got to quickly, quickly hit on. Or you think we hit on everything there? I think we hit on everything. I don't think there was really much more that we missed that probably will come up later in the week too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, there's never a dull day in least training camp. That's for sure. So nope. like we said, we're back. It's the second full week uh, of the locked on lease podcast back with five eps a week. Uh, it's, it's my first full week back obviously with, with you doing all last week and that was awesome dave so again appreciate it saw the great comments people left you how much they're enjoying your uh your 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 podcast so uh way to take the reins there buddy but you and i going forward we're gonna knock it out of the park hopefully everyone watching and still listening uh join us on the journey as the maple leafs uh that was game one of hopefully a lot more on the season um if 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 all things go the way that they want it to go uh, but that'll do it for us here today on the podcast I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show you can subscribe to the locked on these podcasts on all podcasts and platforms also up on youtube and receive daily leaves content follow myself on twitter at mickey underscore uh, underscore canuck follow dave at d underscore morissuti follow the show as well at locked on leaves Go ahead, leave a like and a comment down below if you're here on YouTube. Uh, let us know your thoughts on Twitter. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. Enjoy the game tonight, 7 p.m. puck drop. Tell me if you see David Morissuti either live or on the television. Enjoy it, folks. We'll chat with you again tomorrow. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.